how's it going? Uh, welcome everybody uh, to the first episode of a new Blades of the Dark game. Uh, it's never sunny in Duskfall, uh, so this is the first episode. Uh, I will be the GM um, and sort of the host person. Uh, I'm Eric, I'm Eric Fulgaris here on the internet, and I brought three friends. Uh, this was a long game in the making. I think I wanted <laughs> to do this since, like, whew, um... When, when, we, when do we decide, we guys? We talked about it in April, I think. Yeah, that's a long time yeah. coming, right? <laughs> been so, a while yeah it's it's been it's been kind of a while so uh yeah uh since april we're ready we've been, wanting, we've been finally finally able to schedule and, and start playing this game uh so super excited about that so uh with me uh we got we got three friends here um let's let's go in order here so so kelsa tell us who you are uh, hello a little bit who you're playing uh i'm kelsa uh you can find me on the internet um either uh, Kelsa Delphi here on Twitch or just at Kelsa on Twitter. Uh, I'm going to be playing Jewel, who is a hunter with a uh, a pet monkey. Um, she used to be a pirate from the Dagger Isles, but uh, now she's uh, sort of settled down in Duskfall um, and uh, is going to gonna help uh, run this bar. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that, oh, that's a good point. So so a big premise of this game that showed up and why we're going like it's never sunny in Duskfall, besides it's just like a great name in general, but um, we're going to be running a bar uh, and as, as sort of like our opening spot, like a, like a pub, and, and kind of just seeing where that goes. So um, we're going to have a lot of sort of questions about establishing what's going on with this bar um, and kind of just go from there. So yeah, so thank you. So Kelsa, awesome. Uh, thanks for reminding me to do that. <laughs> uh, and, and I'm so happy to have you here. Uh, Kelsa Yay. is, yeah, Kelsa's, Kelsa's a big, um, uh, big, I don't know, would you, would you say, I think if you, have you been on the most shows of Once Upon a Game, do you think? I don't know, for a while, definitely, yeah. but I'm not sure that's true anymore. I mean, I was wondering, you're one of the biggest co-contributors, uh, co-facilitator <laughs> of games um, that I know, yeah. super excited. Uh, I'm going to see her at Go Play Northwest, which is in next week. <laughs> Yay. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm really excited about that. But uh, I'm also excited to have back uh, Paul and, and Estany. Uh, Paul, what's up, man? Yes. Hello, yourself. I'm Paul. I'm, I'm known on Twitch and other places on the internet as Leafington. Uh, I will be the resident noob at Blades in the Dark. <laughs> uh, because I have never played it. And I had to ask, like, what is an action dot? Uh, so... Uh, Hopefully, worry, through me, as as your channel, we can all learn about the rules of Blades in the Dark. Uh, and I will be playing the leech called Seer. Yes. Excellent. Thank you. And last but certainly not least, Astaney, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Hi, everybody. I'm Astaney. I do stuff on the internet under the name Astaney, which you can see somewhere on the screen down. I think it's down. <laughs> well, um, that way. That <laughs> for way, me. Okay. Well, no, no, no. For you, it's right down. But for okay, me, it's like gosh. all the way over. <laughs> um, I do a board game show on Sundays, and Kelsa's on it a lot, and we have fun. Um, we're going to be playing Hanabi tomorrow, which is about lighting fireworks. Yeah. Because I like to also be thematic. That's, <laughs> that's what actually, uh, that's what it means, right? It means, yes. it means fire flower. In, in um, Japanese. And right. I am going to be playing the slide called Veil. Yes. Awesome. Excellent. So um, I know, I think Paul had a couple questions still about going and making his character. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to um, kind of go along and help him finish up his character together. And, and that will help us get started a little bit. Uh, so, uh, Paul... Um, I believe you already have, um, you got your action dots down, right? Uh, Some of them. I have the ones that are basic in my thing. <laughs> Perfect. Excellent. That's a okay. good so I know my playbook. I know my special ability because it's the first one in the list, which is recommended. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, it shows a heritage, which will be a Ruvian. Yes. Uh, do you, so, do you know anything about what Iruvia is? Uh, a little bit. Apparently, <laughs> Excellent. there's demons there that like, are actually just there and lord over people. Sure. 
I have a quick question. Um, are you? What's your preferred pronoun? Him. Him. Yes. Okay. Cool. Just making sure. All right. Uh, so so tell me a little bit more about so Seer. Uh, so what do you think? So Aruvia has demons ruling over them, right? Like there's like demon princes who who are like regarded as nobility. Um, what kind of flair when you think of Iruvia, what, what kind of like touchstones do you think of? Um, like for me, I think of a lot of like sandy desert, like Egypty, Morocco, um, you know, like, like kind of general North African style things. Uh, That's, what do you think of? And cause I want to go with what you think of and, and like what, a lot of this stuff is totally up as a group to come up with together collaboratively. So when you think of Iruvia, you don't have to think of everything complete, right? Just yeah, what what do you think of when you think of Iruvia? Sure, I uh, I think like for something that's close to that, uh, like like Moroccan stuff. Yes, yeah. uh, if you want to go more exotic, then maybe like the Fremen of Dune. Okay. Uh, yeah. Oh, so like they they know if they care about water a lot. It's like is when you when you think uh, of like I mean, Fremen or like, just it's, it's also an island, so I don't think they care about water that much. Okay. Well, I mean, you can't drink that water. Sure. Okay. <laughs> That's also true. But, okay. but like, as a... May, maybe not the water-obsessed thing, but, like, the... Uh, we know how to live in this land, and all these other guys have no idea what they're yeah. doing. Okay, good. This is great, because uh, I think what I'm going to do for this game, I'm going to kind of do, like, a big... Uh, I'm going to grab a, play, a page out of Dungeon World, and because you're our resident Iruvian, anything regarding Iruvian, I'm going to be asking you to be filling in some details uh, when it's a series. Uh, that kind of stuff, right? So uh, if you're an expert in, in sort of, like, what you choose, um, I'm going to be relying a little bit on, on you guys to collaboratively contribute stuff into the game, if that's cool with everybody. That is that great. Awesome. It's, awesome. Is it <laughs> like it? from Aruvia? No, that's why I, I'm doing it. In fact, we have a pretty uh, diverse crew here, which is a lot of fun. Which is why uh, it came to me to do this. All right. So then it says, based on my heritage, I have to assign an action dot. But yes, you do. So, like, what does that mean? Are there things? So that what that means done? is when you pick that action dot, tell us how that has to do with you growing up in Aruvia. Ah, I see. Yep. So it doesn't and matter what dot you pick, as long as you can say, as the expert of Aruvia, and pull it out of your butt, <laughs> of that really, <laughs> to your your childhood growing up there. You don't All have right. to. Yeah, you don't have to justify it right now, either. Right. So if you oh, know yeah. you want this dot right now, and it's part of Aruvian, and you're not sure why yet, that's fine. Because we can come up with it later. All right. Well, let's let's put it into prowl because going unnoticed in the land of demons is very good. Nice. Okay. Excellent. So, uh -huh. one more dot in prowl. Then the next step would be your background. Uh, my background. Mm-hmm. So your background is sort of like what your career profession, um, it's kind of like a, like a circle's reputation around like a certain strata of people. Uh, Blades in the Dark in general as a game is kind of, it kind of does sort of the urban um, steampunky thing or like 80 Days or uh, Dishonored, but it has a far more, I think, awareness to class in, in a lot of ways uh, than other games. And so I think this kind of helps specify that like there's a certain stratification of different classes and types of people and types of people meeting the different people um of, of sort of the same um profession yeah um so i already have like the alchemist special ability so i don't know if i want to like take that as a trade because it's easy or if i should go for something different maybe academic because yeah. I would have to learn to be an alchemist. Yeah, so that, that would have meant that you studied somewhere, right? Um, yeah. Or you were, like, a teacher. Or, or I was like, mentored. Yeah, yeah or like mentored, that. yeah. That sounds or, pretty good. I think, okay, yeah, what do you, what, um... Cool. So, so you're, so you're going to take an academic background? Yes. Okay. 
I was mentored, and that gives me an action dot too somewhere. Uh, the, I mean, study is the easy one. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll think I'll just go with that. Excellent. The the obvious obvious choice. Sure. To not think about it too much. If you ever yeah. learned anything on Once Upon a Game, is don't think about it too much. Just go with the first thing. All right. This brings me to two more additional action dots. Uh, and I can't go over. Wherever. Yeah, but I can't go over two is what it says, right? You cannot, yeah. Two is the max on any of them. All right. When you, was, when you get a crew, that changes. But So don't worry about that right now. Um. All right. Well, it, it, is it a a good thing to put like uh, things at two? Is it a good thing to put a lot of things at one? Uh, I have I actually have no idea of oh, okay. optimization of blades in the dark. So well, how about how about I give you a quick little spiel of this? Um, sure. Kind of how it works. So it's you played inspectors with me, right? I have not. Okay. Never mind. Um. So imagine playing a game. Uh, where it's a it's a dice pool game, um, where you're try where you grab a group of dice and you're rolling to get the and you're taking the highest of all the dice that you roll. A six means really good. A one means really bad. Uh, with a with a spectrum in the middle, right? Mm -hmm. um, so what you're going to be trying to do is you can try and you're trying to roll a comfortable amount of dice to achieve the thing that you want. Um, as the way the game will work is that you as a player get to describe what action you're taking regardless of the fiction so it's not like Dungeon World where you say something and then the GM interprets it as a move and tells you um, you are the person who declares what kind of like action dot you're taking and how it's fictionally appropriate um, and then me as a GM tell you like okay well you can do it that way but like you're only going to get about this far with it right uh, even at like a perfect if you rolled a 6 this is how far you would get and here's some possible consequences if you don't um, so that's kind of how the game works. Um, it's it's a lot more like free for me than say Apocalypse World, where you're given only um, you know if you roll a, a seven, you have to take one of these things, or the GM chooses one of these things. Like that's it doesn't work that way. Um, in fact, uh, nowhere in the book does it say that the GM actually interprets the rules for you. Um, it's actually it can be a group thing. It could be players. It's up to us. Um, the big the big uh, idea is as long as everyone's okay with it. Um, yeah. So. And I think if I have zero dice, I roll two and take the worst. Correct. Right? It's really bad. Um, now, there's mechanics in the game that let you boost your pool uh, temporarily, usually at the cost of either mechanical hit points called stress or fictional hit points called a devil's bargain, um, where a devil's bargain would be, um, it comes true regardless of your success, but it's usually something bad or something interesting, like a cool fictional twist. Like, for example, uh, the one in the book is that you're trying to gather information, uh, talking to a, um, you're trying to consort with a friend or, or I think, uh, some lady. And one of the person's devil's bargain is that you, you end up wanting to develop a relationship with this lady. Like, that could be, and then it's like, okay, well, I get an extra die, but that means that my character is now going to like that person, you know, in a romantic way. Um, that's a possibility. Other possibilities could be like, okay, you do that, but this faction finds out about you, right? Like, uh, we can all suggest different things. You do not have to take them. Um, it's just, if you want an extra die and it's cool for adding like a fictional twist to something, uh, it's a, it's an option there. You know, you can, so you can either push yourself for stress, give yourself an extra die for something. You can get, you can always push yourself if you don't have a dot. Uh, I think it's called, um, uh, John has a name for that term, uh, like not beginner's luck, but like crew thieves luck or something. I don't know, but um, you can always do that. But generally, more dice you roll, the better, right? All right, better chance of getting a six. Uh, I'll think I'll go with a point in command and a point in skirmish. Those are all good combinations. To okay. uh, to just put a point in in those things. Okay, cool. Cool. So I'm not rolling. Absolutely nothing. All right. So then, items carried. That's a whole list. Then items come into play mostly when we're going on a job, right? Correct. Yeah, you don't need to worry about items carried right now at all, okay. uh, Paul, because we're not currently on a job. And as soon as we are, all you have to worry about is how many items you have with you. Okay. Um, you declare what's called a load. Mm-hmm. 
And at the time when you need one of those items, if it's printed on the character sheet, you can just say you brought it with you as long as you are not at your load. Correct. So um, you don't need to say you have any particular thing with you until the time you actually need to use it. Good. And right. then you have it. So, so we're going to skip that for the time being then. We're going to skip the items part. And now this is the part that I think we all have to answer. I'm not sure if we did it together. Um, we're choosing yeah. close friends and rivals. Uh, so everyone's character mm. sheet has a couple, a list of people on them. What you're going to do is you're going to pick one person who's your friend and one person who's a rival. This uh, is one of my favorite parts. <laughs> so uh, let's just continue right now with, with, with Seer, with Paul. So you were an Iruvian right. alchemist. Um, yes. And you so studied, I think you had a mentor or something. So. Apothecary there is obviously my rival. Obviously. Obviously. So, so Stasia. 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 Yeah. Uh, apothecary. Uh, and all these other ones sound really cool, but other than the priestess, I have no idea what they actually are. <laughs> So there's a psychonaut, a corpse thief, and a blood dealer. Yeah, what um, what could they be? Uh, I mean, you tell me. What do those mean to you? Like a corpse thief. Uh, like the first one would be like he's a grave robber, but he's stealing the corpses for something. So. Uh, yeah, grave robber yeah. sounds like a person. Necromancer. A blood dealer would mean there's like vampires, or somehow it's okay to consume blood. Yep, that's also true. And a psychonaut, I have no idea. Obviously like, someone who does a lot of drugs. Yeah, and or like travels through people's yeah. dreams or yeah, uses a lot of drugs so that they can travel through people's dreams. Uh, let's go with the blood dealer who's my friend. So, Jewel is a blood dealer. Oh, that might get not, not to be confused with <laughs> Jewel. No. Yeah. Jewel versus UL Excellent. versus. Okay. Um, what else is, uh, oh, now that one of the last things you do is you select your vice at this mm -hmm. point. Um, so on your character sheet, there's a couple vices to choose from. Um, there's faith, gambling, luxury, an obligation, pleasure, stupor, or weird. I've always had uh, issues coming to... up with what obligation, what what how obligation works as a vice. Well, I've had a couple of people have obligation as a vice. Um, one family was their obligation, so they were always taking home money for their wife and child. You know, they were. They had a couple of kids, and that led to one of my favorite Devil's Bargains of all time, which was when uh, the crew was trying to talk to a madame at a whorehouse. Um, the Devil's Bargain of, hey, you know your 19-year-old daughter? She works at this whorehouse. Mm. Yeah. like, And that so. only works because his, his vice was his family, you know? Yeah. And so... I it, so it's not that I, so let me, I have to clarify a little bit. It's not that I, I, I think the best example I've heard of obligation, besides that one, that's a really good one, uh, is like Ant-Man uh, obligation. But I just always thought it's weird because an obligation of family is sort of like um, you're trying to be a good person and it's really like your life of crime is the vice rather than the other way around. <laughs> Does that make sense? I mean, not necessarily because you can be like a good family man while still being a shitty crime lord yeah like, but, like that's that's I what mean, i'm trying to say is like but the the vice is going home yeah like, and getting that comfort from your family yeah and you know that if someone finds yeah. out that you really love your wife that, that that's gonna ruin your crime reputation yeah yeah no that's like it's really like obligation uh family means that you are crime person first and family second instead of yeah. the normal other way around which is why i think exactly. ant-man describes it really well because he's you know he can't have his daughter and like he's fine with it he's like oh yeah okay and then the stepdad's like fine but like it's like he still wants to see his daughter and stuff like that but um yes exactly it's just like i can't be a dad like i gotta do my shit right mm -hmm. and, and so like that sort of i don't know it, it's this weird balance of, of things and that's uh, unlike the other um 
uh, vices. And there was uh, another one. Uh, my brother's character is uh, his obligation is to um, the his home consulate because basically he has to like he's like effectively here in Duskfall on like a visa, and so he has to continue to pay the consulate in order to remain in Duskfall. Oh, that's a cool. That's a cool obligation. That's yeah, a good yeah. one. Yeah, that's a good one. I like that. So, so yeah, I've seen, like I said, I've seen obligation done a couple of different ways, and it all depends on on how you want to interpret it. Shit, that's really cool. Yeah, I like <laughs> that one. Uh, in my other in my other blades game that kind of just came up, um, they're getting pinched really bad by the circle of flame. Basically, like the store that they're hiding out in, um, since they've been pissing off the circle of flame, and now like the circle of flame just show up, and instead of fighting them and doing anything like that they just show up being like we bought the deed of your property the rent is raising to this right and it's like oh gosh it's so good and so then like they <laughs> they tried to convince them to do it and so then they just came back being like the the rent's now going to be even more right unless you do this job for us and so it's like they're just gonna hold them on the hook until they get rid of it but it's like it's, <laughs> it's hard to fight like a, it's like it's like kind of like a shadow run kind of thing where like they're the mega corporation and like you can't beat them in that in that sort of game Mm -hmm. um, so like, yeah totally yeah. so yeah like fighting fighting because of money and obligation is is kind of funny so anyways uh we're getting way off track uh, seer what what's up man what what is going to be your vice this is what your All character right. uses to get rid of stress had had a blow off steam coming from missions and stuff um so i don't want to do luxury because i think <laughs> everyone else just looks thingy yeah. and <laughs> Kelsa are already doing luxury. Yeah. So I want to stay away from that one for sure. Totally. Uh, I don't know if I want to like go whole hog and go with stupor over pleasure. Because <laughs> uh, it, it seems like Wolf. kind of the same thing, but just in way more excess. Yeah, I think technically mine is actually pleasure and not luxury, but because it's Luxury is like buying expensive stuff and looking really fancy. Yeah. And pleasure is she likes to go to the most expensive restaurant yeah. and eat the most expensive foods well, and have the most expensive decadent desserts. Yeah. And but you like of them which, because they're delicious. Yeah. But so speaking yeah. of which, Kelsa, actually, I want to answer this question because you just brought up what your character is doing there. Um, so <laughs> you, you chose a chef and you want to eat the most, the most special meal. And I have the idea in my head, because you're from the Dagger Isles, it's like no one else can make the meal that, like, you know, like your mom used to make, right? Like, no one can get the fucking Dagger Isles jerk oh, chicken man. right, except the for this one group, The only place you can, the right? whole city that you can get lizard on a stick. Yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> like, no, like, there's other people who sell lizard on the stick, but it's never as good. You know what I mean? It's, it's like, just chicken. It's not authentic. Why yeah. Lizard on a stick? Yeah, like, it's not authentic. It's not like, you're, you know, it's like, so you have a memory of a way at certain tastes and the chef just nails it and that's yeah. and you know you're just loyal to them like i have that kind of idea so you want to do lizard on the stick is that okay. is that what it is sure <laughs> okay because i wanted to ask you what that what is the meal that reminds you of that because as, if, if you're willing to indulge my idea for that game unless you have a different I know, idea i love that it's great <laughs> it's okay. like lizard on the stick and like just like mango chutney Ooh, that actually sounds kind of good. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I mean, I've had alligator before. It tastes like chicken. Yeah. <laughs> um. All right, all right. Let's go with snooper. It's, it's gonna be fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, and you know, being an alchemist, I can I can make it myself, so yeah. I don't even have to pay anyone. So it, it probably goes really poorly a lot of times. Well, <laughs> um, kind of. I may want to know. So you make it yourself. So you have to get your supplies from somewhere, right? Yeah, sure. So that might be something on the hook of you know you might make it yourself. But you still need to get the ingredients to do it. Right? Yeah, for sure. 
Um, uh, at least in the, maybe maybe a project early on would be like your own grow stand or something like that, right? Something to, to so you can be self sufficient. But right now, yeah. you, while you can make it yourself, you're, you can't. Um, you're not. Uh, what's the word? Uh, autarctic, uh, aut like autarky, like self sufficiency. Okay. Like you're not that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, autocratic. I, I no, not it's... autocratic because it's not like king, but it's yeah. like it's called an it's called art artuk. Like I heard of it for like artuk. I don't know. A R T U K. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, I don't know. Right. I'm I'm looking it up right now because I know it's a word. I know it's a word. Yeah. I'm not making this up. Let's uh. There's a list of drugs, so let me pick a pick, pick a nice one of those. All turkey, economic independence or self sufficiency. That's, but it's a noun. I don't know how to how you make it into an adjective. Oh well. Well, there you go, guys. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So stupor. Um, maybe maybe your blood dealer friend hooks you up. Damn. Maybe you don't need blood, but like maybe he is a blood dealer, but like he also deals other things too, right? Uh, all right. Well, then let's do. Uh, I'm uh, my my vice is the blood needle drug. Oh no, it doesn't have to be blood. I'm not pushing you. I'm not pushing you I, into I, blood, but no, like... no, it's just called blood needle because you stick okay. it into your vein. Okay. But, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> you totally. Know. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Um, it's also crimson tincture injected into the vein. So, awesome. you know. Ooh. So then Cool. So then we literally uh so then then you're literally done your character. For now. That's it. Yeah, yeah. that's it. We're done. We're ready to go. <laughs> yep. Um well, there's one thing I think I have left for uh Vale. Okay. Um I don't think did you give me you so your vice is luxury, but what kind of luxury item or good is it? Um I feel for Vale it's probably gotta be fashion and also really ostentatious masks. Oh. Oh that's yeah, right, that's, that's Vale's yeah. deal. Like bejeweled, hand painted. Do you have some, do you have like, um, I was going to say, is Mask Maker, is, would Haberdasher cover masks? Is it just hats? I, I think know. Haberdasher would just be hats. Because yeah, so like, I what's think a Mask maker? maker is something different. Okay. Well, is there the name of a store or a provider of the masks? Or do you make, once again, do you make them yourself? Avail oh, wouldn't make her own masks. Yeah, that seems way below. <laughs> She would probably um, commission them, like go to like a place that does does custom work, and like say, "All right, I want something like that, but I want it with that design, and can you cover it in these specific jewels and that sort of thing?" Oh yeah, so you would have to go to a jeweler to like you know get it done. Um, a jeweler would probably make sense, or like a jeweler working with some kind of mask maker. Yeah, exactly. You're right. Like they have to socket the the mask in the right way. Um, so let's come up with a jeweler for you. Okay. So there's a bunch of purveyors of vices and stuff in the book. Um, let's look for... Um, uh, some fabrics and tailoring. That doesn't really help. Oh, apparently a milliner makes women's hats. Ah, thank you, Glover. <laughs> so yeah, it'd be a milliner. Um, we can go with a milliner. Yeah, let's go with milliner. That sounds cool. <laughs> so uh, this doesn't exist uh, in written in the book. So let's come up with a name together. Uh, okay. Let's, let's come up with a name that would be fun for you. Hmm. I'm really bad with names. Okay. Well, there's a <laughs> list of names I think in the rules reference. Oh, um, awesome. Maybe reference two. Nope, there isn't. Okay. Then. <laughs> um, is there a list of names from the character generation? Is that where? That yeah, comes? it's in character generation and in GM uh, on the GM handout. Yeah. Sheet. Okay. Um, there's lots of names. Oh yeah, it's... I have a ton of names that we can we can look at right now. So is this a man or a woman? Do you think? Um. 
let's go with a lady. All right. Cool. I like Zamira because it starts with Z. Ooh, I like Z I like Zamira as well. Let's go with that then. How do you spell that? Uh, Z A M I R A. Okay. Now, does she run like her own small Ooh. store? Is it like a nice? Is it like a? Uh, help me out with the French word. Is it like a boudoir? Is that what? Boutique. Court? Boutique. Yeah. Is it boutique? <laughs> yes, it's a boutique. <laughs> yeah, I don't know words. It's, it's almost the same thing. Boutique. Almost. No. Is um, it a bedroom or? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it's not a bedroom. But uh, I guess I guess boutique is the right word. Uh, like yeah. you know when you go to a high end fashion place. And there's yeah. somebody who like tail like a tailor works with you, like a courtier works with you to get the right clo or clothier like works with you. Uh, is this kind of like what it is for the milliner? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And there's some good ideas floating around in chat. Umbra was um, talking about a Greek word that I can't possibly pronounce. Uh, used for ooh. people who make plot props for plays, Scoop including but not limited to masks. Scupios. Well, that makes me think that the name of the sh the store would be something similar to that, like yeah, like it's a play on it. It's like it's the prop makers, but it's you know like or, or something, but it's really for like high end clientele. You know yeah, I, mean? <laughs> um, I like it. Also, like having it sort of so imagine sort of like the the Greek play as sort of the uh, epitome form of art kind of thing. You know, like it's like high end art. Uh, so having the name of like you know. A, oh the the lowly um the lowly playmaker person right for like a noble theater kind of play on words and ideas for this this high end boutique. I like it. And so it'd be like be the star of your own play would be like it's, it's, you know it, it's uh it's tagline something like that. Uh, yeah, so, it's um, like one of those places that looks super tacky, but like all of the really rich nobles go there. And like the fact that it looks tacky is like, like kind of like a nod to it. Yeah. Being, it, it's right. like super hipster yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. It, it's super hipster. <laughs> it's it's supposed to be like country style, but it's like extremely expensive. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's 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 supposed to look like oh yeah we're you're 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 slumming it with these simple like street performance masks, but it's really like super super high end stuff. Um, yeah, oh, I love it. <laughs> So right. I, had a, I had a question. Would it mm -hmm. be better if I picked a purveyor that was not already my friend of my vice? Oh, uh, yeah, if you want to. All right. So let's pick one from the list. That is Roland Valeris. Looks at the Vale in Night Market. I was going to mention that I have, um, what do you call it? Not your friend, but your rival, I guess. Mm -hmm. And I have a rival drug dealer, if you wanted to. Oh, yeah. You him instead. I have Brill. Uh, sure. What's his name? Brill. B-R-Y-L. I like the idea yeah. that Sears provider is your rival because yeah me too that's why i, I suggested it <laughs> that's no that's brilliant that sounds awesome yeah that is good um okay um then we have to look at jewel jewel you have besides mr bubbles your pet monkey mm -hmm. melvier <laughs> what uh a physicer so yeah a like doctor? a doctor yeah. yeah and casta the bounty hunter she and I, um, she and I had uh, went up against the where we were trying to collect the same bounty. Sure. Is it? Is she? And is it? Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt. Is she like a uh, also like a pirate, like a privateer? Yeah, like she's also like a. What did Zoom do? Uh, sorry, it freaked out on me for a second. Somehow I minimized it. <laughs> um. And it confused me. Uh, yeah, she was like a, a privateer also. Um, and she she and I went up together on the same bounty. And both of us lost it. And we each blame the other one for, for letting 
the... for letting them get away. Cool. Do you remember who got away? Uh, oh. let me come up with a name. They're still out there. They've never been caught. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> it was a man named Ashlyn Schlein. Ashlyn Shane. And um Do you know what they're what they were what they're why they were a felon or a fugitive? I don't ask those kind of questions. You just get the paycheck? I just get the paycheck. <laughs> for for Not bringing important. them back. All right. Not important. Whatever whatever Ashlyn did, I don't need to know. I know he led us on a wild goose chase out to a little island in the middle of nowhere. It's not on any of the maps. And uh, uh, me and Costa were stuck there for two weeks after he managed to sabotage both of our boats and uh, get away. Whoa. Sorry, I just learned that you can do a lot of cool stuff in Roll20. <laughs> okay. You can do cool stuff in Roll20. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Okay, so now that we got our characters all set up, um, so real quick now, now that we did all this together, uh, a quick uh, like two-sentence description of your guys' characters once more so everyone knows who everyone is. Okay, so let's start again with, uh, let's start with Kelsa. All right, I'm playing Jewel, and she is a hound. I'm uh, taking the Ghost Hunter special ability, which means that my hunting pet is imbued with spiritual energy, and I gain potency when tracking or fighting supernatural things, and I get an arcane ability, which in this case is Mind Link, and that uh, hunting pet would, of course, be Bubbles. Mr. Bubbles, my best friend, the monkey. Excellent. Um, and uh, for as far as a physical description, um, Jewel is from the Dagger Islands, so she has dark skin, dark eyes, and short dark hair. Um, it's shaved, um, fairly short cropped with just a little bit on the top. Um, she likes to wear loose silk shirts uh, and tight pants. Um, and she has, um, oh, I'm trying to think of the right word, um, subdermal implants along her cheek uh, on, on both sides of uh, just little jewels. Uh, here, here, here. And then uh, above each of her eyebrows. So she's, is she like, is, is that common for, for the Dagger Isles? Or is that very identifiable? Um, I would say it's very identifiable, but also somewhat common. Like, you but, would. Oh, not, her pattern's unique. Like, yeah, her pattern is okay. unique, but. You would never see anyone that's not from the Dagger Isles that would have this kind of facial piercing. Sure. Okay. But not everybody from the Dagger Isles is going to have it. Okay. Okay, yeah, I get it. I get it. Okay, cool. So Is it uh, is it like excruciatingly painful but somehow culturally important for Dagger yes. Isles? <laughs> I I in fact I want to spout lore right now. Mm -hmm. Um <laughs> it is this is how they manage to live without lightning barriers. It's a, uh, it's an anti-ghost protection. Oh, okay. I like that a lot. Um, oh, that's really I, cool. And I want you to know, I just like I decided about the facial piercings like months ago. Yeah. And I decided about the protection from the ghost part like right this second. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna put dagger aisles. Um, put dagger aisles, and I'm putting. Um, uh, facial jewelry uh, per wards off coast. All right. Excellent. Cool. Good deal, guys. All right. So now I think we're ready to begin. Okay. Sure. Okay. All right. So, I mean, everybody else get introductions. Oh yeah, shit! Oh. Everyone else gets introductions. <laughs> but I, I was like, I knew I forgot something. I, I got so excited, I jumped the gun. Okay. Uh, I was just so, like, whatever. Yeah. It's cool. We can start. Paul? <laughs> so, Paul, who are you playing again? All right. Uh, I'll be playing Seer, who is a leech, uh, 
being Eruvian. He is amber skin. He is dark, short curly hair, and he has a beard but no mustache. So it's like like kind of like the Amish beard style. Uh, uh, he is uh, tall and skinny, uh, and he tries to wear a nice suit, but it's like he wears a suit to literally everything all the time. Uh, so. You know, if you see him from far away, it's like, whoa, he's way overdressed. And if you see him from up close, it's like, wow, that suit is shitty as fuck. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, including, you know, uh, a jacket, pants, a, ni a nice shirt, a shirt that was once nice. Uh, and like a, like a hat, like a stovetop hat. Okay, cool. A stovetop. Uh, oh yeah, so like a full, a full like, um, I mean suit, uh, liberally because <laughs> of the quality of it. But, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, and he's a leech and an alchemist. Has, uh, yeah. Ability, so cool. I can make poisons and drugs and. This might sound like a weird <laughs> question, um, but does your character smell? Like, does he <laughs> smell like chemicals and stuff? Like being around it all the time. <laughs> Like, he probably smells of stuff that people just can't place. Yeah, yeah, okay. Like, it's not like he smells bad, but it's no. like... There's just a weird smell all Yeah, this. like, I'm like, do you smell like bleach all the time? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, But it's like, it's like smelling like bleach, but no one knew what bleach was. Yeah, yeah. It's just, just like, what is that smell? Like, yeah. I don't um, get it. Once again, I don't know the word. Is it like acerbic? Is that a type of, like, acidic? Like, the smell of acid? What's the what's the word? For, what's, it, it it varies from day to day. It's not vitriolic, but um, it varies. Like yeah. it, it's never the same one smell. Like it, it's always something. So kind of acrid. Acrid's the word. Thank you. That's a good word. Thank you. Yeah. See, we're using big words in blades. <laughs> big words in the dark. <laughs> but that's here. Awesome. That's thing. Yeah. Yep. Asani. Okay, so I'm playing Vale, and she is a slide. Um, she looks like a proper lady, like, always wear... Well, I wouldn't say always, but when she is herself and not pretending to be someone else, she is always wearing, like, formal noble dresses because she does come from a noble background. Mm -hmm. um, she actually is from... Akoros? Is that how you pronounce that? Yeah, Akros. But I like Akoros. Akoros sounds even more Greek. So which kind of is goes in <laughs> with the weird play thing. Right? Kind of surprisingly. Or like Latin, maybe, is a better way of thinking of well, it. Well, maybe the people from the south part of the continent call it Akoros. A oh. But up in uh, Duskfall, they're all like Akros. <laughs> oh, I love that. I love it. Because oh. she's actually from the south. She, yeah. um... Her family was ruined, but they used to have um, lands in Elysia and used to attend court in the Imperial City. Oh. Um, but now. But after her family was ruined, uh, she kind of fled north where no one really knew her or her background. And so her whole kind of motivation is start again, take back what's hers, get revenge, all that fun stuff. So you have family members, like, in, um, out, like not maybe not in Duskfall, but away in other places. Um, I have a father in Duskfall that I keep highly sedated. <laughs> Whoa, okay. <laughs> um, I have an uncle who basically sold our family out to a rival, and that's why he fell. Okay. My mother's dead. I have no siblings anymore. We probably have distant family, but I can't call on them. Oh, so you sold it. Okay. So you <laughs> s what does your family think of your uncle? Do they know that he sold out the, your family? Well, I mean, his side of the family is quite pleased because he rose into power. My side of the family is just me now and my father, which I keep sedated. Oh, okay, I see. I see. So there was like a schism of your family. And, yes. And so, so like whatever major assets and stuff your family went with your uncle, uh, yes. off to, to um, 
did he like marry into another family or something? Is maybe is that what how it sold out the family? Um, like like so it basically yeah, it was, the inheritance was, and everything got screwed up and now they're like now you got subsumed into this thing. It's something like that, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so it's some kind of complicated thing. So it's just you and your father now are are the only people. Yes, okay. because my mother killed herself, and oh. my brother <laughs> succumbed. That's, that's really a casual way of saying that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We all fled to Duskfall, and everything was awful, and my mother's just like, nope. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, there's more complicated stuff, but we'll get into it. <laughs> sure. Yeah, no, thank you. That's That whole, that huge mess is certainly, uh, you know, uh, might show up in, from time to time in this game, I imagine. Cool. <laughs> so, also, yeah. as part of the game, um, we're not going to start with a crew. Is this going to be us um, together? And setting up a crew will probably happen... Um, near the end of the, this session or maybe the next session possibly so you guys are all going to be technically tier zero and it's just you guys right now um, okay and uh how about how about we start the game because it's 11 it's 152 right now um let's formally start it and after our first break uh this way you don't have to do this and then do it again uh at the, <laughs> at the start of the game okay so we're gonna take a quick uh five minute break get some water and then formally start um the game so thanks guys Okay.